Today is December 13th, and this means I am halfway through my Advent journey. How well have I prepared myself for a new Advent in my life, a new beginning with my God. My Father, who loves me so much, gives me this time to begin anew through his loving forgiveness. Sometimes I'm afraid that God won't forgive me or love me, but then I remember what I have learned about the gift that was given to me and to all of us, the gift of reconciliation. My God loves me so much that he wants nothing to come between us and to keep us apart. Lord, help me to accept your gift of love and mercy. Help me to believe that you forgive me and help me to forgive others. Come into my heart, Lord, now as I look back at my thoughts, words, and behavior. Do I have a genuine love for my neighbors? Or do I use them for my own ends? Have I failed to love by failing to be honest and trustworthy? Do I engage in gossip or other harmful actions? Do I treat people with love and kindness, or am I only loving and kind to people when I need something from them? Do I sometimes tell lies to make me feel better or so I won't get in trouble? Do I talk about other people behind their backs or act mean to them sometimes? Do I contribute to the well-being and happiness of my family and society by my patience and genuine love? Do I show respect for others by listening and by accepting them as they are? Or am I quick to judge? Do I make hurtful remarks? Do I make my family and others happy when I am with them? Do I listen kindly to them, or am I quick to lose my patience and say or do mean things? Do I share my possessions with the less fortunate? Do I do my best to help the victims of oppression, misfortune, and poverty? Or do I look down on my neighbor, especially those who are different from me, the poor, the rich, the sick, the elderly, strangers, people of other races? Do I play well and share my toys with others? Do I work well with other kids and the teachers at school? Do I try to help others when they need something, like share my school books or supplies or toys or snacks? Do I make everyone feel welcome? Does my life reflect the mission I received at baptism? Do I share in the apostolic and charitable works of the church? Do I give of my time and talent for the building of the kingdom? Or am I too busy to offer time and prayer and service of others? Am I too busy to go to Mass? Do I remember to do what Jesus would do and to act like Jesus would act to others? Do I remember to pray for my family and friends, myself? Do I thank God for all the wonderful things I have and all the wonderful people that love me and care for me? Am I honest and just at work or at home? Do I exercise authority with compassion? Do I promote justice, morality, and harmony in my place of work? Am I concerned with the good and prosperity of the human community? Or am I only concerned about my well-being? Do I always tell the truth? Am I always kind, or do I act like a bully sometimes? If I see someone who is sad, do I try to help them and make them happy? Or 
or do I only care about myself? Am I estranged from others through quarrels, insults, or anger? Have I failed to forgive? Do I harbor hatred and the desire for revenge? Have I been willing to ask forgiveness? Have I been willing to offer forgiveness? Is there someone who I am no longer friends with because they made me mad? Have I tried to talk to them and forgive them and be their friend again? Or have I tried to get other people to be mad at them too? When that servant had left, 
he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling on his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had him put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to the master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt that you begged of me. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then, in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the entire debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. I welcome you and thank you for being here this evening as we have an opportunity to once again immerse ourselves in, in God's love, and particularly this evening in the way that God desires to free us and forgive us. That's what forgiveness is. It's, it's being free again, free to be the people that God created us to be. We all want God to forgive us. Sometimes we get challenged when we realize that we in turn need to forgive one another because that's where the real freedom comes. The real freedom comes when we, when we know that God's love is so powerful in our lives that we don't have to hang on to things. We don't have to hang on to our own sins and feel bad about them. And we don't have to boy, hang on to our own resentments to somehow think that we can get even because they continue to bind us up. That's what we want to celebrate tonight in reconciliation. That's why we brought everybody together to our first uh, children making their first reconciliation and all of the parish, you know, whether we are seven years old or 77 years old. All of us are in need of God's freedom and God's mercy and God's love. And all of us have the privilege of being a sign of hope and light for one another, whether we are 77 or 7. To be able to, to walk in that freedom of knowing that God always, always, always gives us another chance and we have to learn how to help one another have another chance we come together tonight in, in this time of advent when darkness is so much a part of our days and we remind ourselves of the privilege and the responsibility that we have to be light for the world and more importantly light for one another like for our own families, like for our own communities, like for our own people, so that we can realize that the presence of God is still powerful and active in our lives. That's why after you will have an opportunity for individual reconciliation with the priests that have volunteered to be with us this evening, and we thank them for that, we invite you to go to the back of our church, or we have these little lights that you can there's a little switch on the bottom of them, and put in our display and prospect there. And you'll see as we continue to go through our service and people are freed of their sins, that light grow. And it's a reminder for all of us of what we can do in our own families, and in our own communities, and in our own environments. How by us letting our life and light will be free, we can impact the life and life of others. 
There's also a prayer card back there for you to take to remind us of the challenge as we continue to journey through Advent to the wonderful light of, of Christmas. And we also invite you to come to the hall afterwards and share in our uh, ice cream social is there. Is it time to celebrate? As I met with the parents of the second graders earlier in the school year, I said there's the, the three C's, the, the contrition and the confessing, but also the celebrating. The celebrating that we have a God that's always wanting and willing to forgive. That's what we're about to see here. That opportunity to step in and immerse ourselves in God's goodness. I said to the second graders, I know you're a little nervous, but so are your grandmas and grandmas. And so are the priests that are up here. None of us like to admit sin, but we all know that it's the only way that we get freedom from it. And it's the only way that we are able to grow out of it by knowing it and acknowledging it and asking God to help us walk through the other side of it. And that's what we'll do this evening. My dear friends, let us call to mind the goodness of God our Father and admit our sins so that we may receive his forgiveness. I would invite us to kneel, those that are capable at this time. And pray the act of contrition. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And if we could please stand, God does not want us, want the sinner to die, but to turn to him and live. And may God be pleased that we have acknowledged our sinfulness. And may God forgive us as we forgive others, as we pray in the words that our Savior has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Merciful God, you sent your Son to dwell among us, to be our light in the darkness, and to willingly sacrifice himself for us. As we enter into the sacrament of reconciliation, help us to be willing to open our hearts and minds to Christ. We praise you always as the God of all forgiveness, one God forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to individual reconciliation at this time. If you have any questions, the hospitality people in the back will be more than happy to help you. 